Boy, look at that. The blood down the rate has dropped 68%. These bums are killing us, Mr. Troutman. I think we ought to get a muzzle and put it on that crazy nun. Turner, Mr. Troutman will handle it. All right, gentlemen, all right. We've seen this. Now let's go take a look at Sister Janet. Insight. Stories of modern man's search for meaning. Freedom. Love. Insight. What does it mean to believe? It means to allow yourself to be grasped by God. It means to surrender yourself to the loving ground of your being and allow him to take over in your life. Jesus was this kind of man. He was transparent to the light and life of his father. He was so filled with the father's love that he reached out to enrich all those around him. He was brother, friend, and servant to everyone he met. But he did have a special preference for the poor and the sinful, the exploited and rejected. He freely gravitated toward them. Why? Because they needed him most. He felt their pain. He ministered to their needs. He fought for their rights. He identified himself with them. Jesus did this. But how about us? Can we do what he did, at least to some extent, on our own or with his help? And what happens to us inside, I mean, when we try? <laughs> Just a second, a Vicky. Of... Sister Janet, you're not going to believe who's out there. Please, Leonard Troutman and his entourage are snooping around out there. Tepler Laboratories. The one in the gray suit? Yeah, the other guy's an attorney. Do you think they want to negotiate? I don't know. They just set it up on their own turf, made, made formal arrangements. Well, they're not here to sample the food, that's for sure. Nancy, will you please take over at the stove? Troutman, I'm Sister Janet. This is Steve Cameron. How do you do, Sister? This is our chief counsel, Mr. Shields. How do you do? Fine, thank you. So, this is and Brother... This gentleman I know is... Mr. Turner. He owns two of our local blood banks. Oh, not any longer, Sister. Mr. Troutman's company owns them now. Yes, of course. Tepler Laboratories. Why don't we all sit down? Thank you. Thank you. Well, allow me. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. What can we do for you, gentlemen? Well, Mr. Shields and I wanted to meet you and have a first-hand look at all the fine work you've been doing down here. You came all the way from Ohio just for that? Well, actually, we were in town for a business meeting. As a matter of fact, Steve and I have been racking our brains for the past three weeks trying to figure out a way to get in touch with you. Really? Yes, Mr. Troutman, really. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, before we leave here, I'll give you my private phone number. You can call me there any hour of the day or night. That's very generous. Oh, that's only the beginning, sister. Tepler Laboratories has deep roots in this community. To us, doing business is more than just taking. It's our policy to give back. And from time to time, we find an organization we feel is doing exceptional work. And a few weeks ago, several newspaper articles came across my desk, and I learned of your free kitchen. There are other free kitchens, other groups around here who also serve our people. Oh, you're referring to the missions. Well, Mr. Turner tells me they're uh, very well supported. You people here at Brotherhood House, you seem to operate on a shoestring. We manage to find enough love to keep our work going. Merchants give us food. People donate clothing and money. I'll admit it's a struggle. God's sense of humor. <laughs> sense of humor? He makes us sweat it out day by day. Oh, he always comes through with what we need, but never until the last moment, and then only our daily bread. Never enough for tomorrow. The reference to daily bread, Mr. Troutman, is <laughs> oh, Mr. Things. Cameron, believe it or not, I go to church too, Jack. Sister, please, on behalf of 
Tepler Laboratories, will you accept this donation with our gratitude? Five thousand dollars? I'm speechless. And that's it, huh? No strings, just your gratitude? No, we impose no conditions on charity. However, I will say in all honesty, sister, I was surprised at what I saw on the way down here today. Yes, conditions are shocking, aren't they? That's not exactly what I mean. Oh, you mean our picket lines. Yes. When Mr. Turner told me what was going on down at the blood banks, I thought he was joking. This morning, we actually saw it with our own eyes, and when we found out who was responsible, well, to put it mildly, I was shocked. Now, wait a minute. This is the first time you've heard about the strike? Uh-huh. And you're the president of this company? Uh, Mr. Turner's company is just one of a dozen subsidiaries. We own blood and plasma banks all up and down the coast. We also own five pharmaceutical companies, uh, an electronics manufacturing company, two engineering firms. So you'll forgive me if sometimes it takes me a little while to find out everything that's going on. Yeah, well, that's a real impressive list, Mr. Troutman. But I sent you a letter five weeks ago outlining the entire situation. Oh, well, I didn't receive it. And believe it or not, that happens too sometimes. He never received the letter? No. Next, I suppose you tell us that he never mentioned our demands. <laughs> tell you the truth, they were so ridiculous, I didn't think it was worth bothering Mr. Troutman with. Well, in any event, I'm here now, and I know there is a problem, and I would like to get to the bottom of it. Would anyone like some coffee? It ought to be ready by now. Uh, no, thank you, sister. Shields? I'd like... Mr. Turner? No, thank you. Sister, you've been down here on Skid Row doing God's work for years. Brilliantly. Now, why all of a sudden have you gone into radical politics? A legitimate strike can hardly be classified as radical politics. Mr. Shields didn't mean to offend you, sister, but you are functioning in a capacity that has very little to do with religion. Love has everything to do with religion, Mr. Troutman, and that's our function Love, here. Love, sister? We give these people food, money, clothing, and help them fight for their rights. But most of all, we try to share ourselves with them. Real poverty goes beyond basic material needs. Real poverty is to feel useless, unwanted, unloved. And these people are lovable. They give us back as much as they receive from us. Sister, all we're suggesting is that you stick to what you do best. When you love people, Mr. Shields, you feel their pain almost as acutely as they do. So when they're being exploited, you can't just sit back and pray. Exploited. They're not being exploited at all, sister. We're paying them good, hard cash for their blood. Five dollars a pint when the going rate anywhere else in this town is three times that much. Well, why strike? Send your people to those places. Oh, man, where is your head at? These people, they're, they're sick and they're desperate. I mean, they're not like you and me. They sell the blood out of their veins. Can you understand that? I mean, all they want is a, is a little booze to, 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 to shut out the horror of their existence. They, they don't get in a bus and go across town to another blood bank. They just go to the nearest place and they throw their body down on the table. The nearest place, and we happen to provide the nearest place, so we're providing a service. By keeping them in bondage, by taking advantage of their desperation, violating their dignity, reducing them to things, not people, Mr. Turner, things. Can't you see? You're turning them into human cows. How can a man who gives plasma two times a week be good for anything else? He's caught in a vicious circle. Weakened physically, diminished mentally. What chance does he have of changing? Changing? Do you suppose any of these winos would change if they didn't sell their blood? Most people are not here because they like it. A lot are trying to get out, and some actually do. Skid Row is not a dead end. Sister, I have the feeling you won't be interested in just higher blood fees. You'd like to close <clears throat> us down altogether. Yeah, that's right. A blood donor needs a high-protein diet and plenty of rest. These men have no business donating their blood. We're realistic enough to realize that we can close you down now, so we will settle for higher fees. Don't you know what medical costs are now? It's a matter of economics. Plasma isn't that profitable. If we have to pay more, we have to pass the cost on to sick people. Don't you understand that? I'll tell you what, sister, let's, uh, I will have that coffee. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen. Oh, fine. <clears throat> sister, when did you become interested in social work? I don't consider this social work. What's the difference? Well, we don't have to worry about statistics, thank God. Or programs for the entire city. You can't love mankind, just people, one by one. The one you're with is all that counts. Don't you find that a little depressing, the scale you're working on in relation to the whole problem? We thought in terms of numbers that it would be depressing. We'd be lost in those numbers. And when that happens, 
The poor get robbed of the dignity they deserve as human beings and the children of God. Why don't you take over the salad and I'll help you to share. I can appreciate your concern for these people, but do you have to live with them? We try to get as close as possible to the people we serve. As close as possible? Sister, is this martyrdom really necessary? It's actually a very freeing experience. Life is less complicated. You don't have to worry about possessions or things. It's easier to concentrate on the basics. Your need for God, your need for others. Like the beautiful people we meet here. Take the vision of a saint to see these bums as beautiful. Oh, it's very romantic, storming the barricades of poverty, giving your life for fallen mankind. Helps you get rid of your guilts. Might even be a little sneaking bit of masochism there. Now, honestly, sister, doesn't the thrill of wallowing in the gutter wear a little thin after a while? If we start with illusions of sainthood, Mr. Shields, Skid Row quickly straightens us out. I've been here six years. I hope to die here with my people. With your people? Diseased derelicts, winos, and prostitutes? The kind of people Jesus associated with, in preference to the self-righteous. Mary Magdalene was a prostitute, a high-priced one, and she became a saint. I guess I haven't met too many Mary Magdalene's. Boy, if I saw people the way you did, I'd be out of business in one week. No, Mr. Shields, you'd be free to love everyone, even the poorest of the poor, the criminals, the outcasts. This is where I find Jesus. God gives himself to me through them. He would to you, too. I have enough trouble finding God in church. If you can't find God through helping people, Mr. Troutman, there's no way you're going to find him in church. I was always taught that God helps those who help themselves. Some people are incapable of helping themselves. A man in a wheelchair can't work, and neither can a man who's psychologically crippled. Yeah, and every time you give one of those mental cripples a hand out, you help them stay that way. Don't you see that? Now, there's a lot of people down here on welfare, right? Some. And a lot of them get pension checks of one kind or another? Some do. Some don't. And instead of buying clothes and food, they blow it on booze. And then you people come along with your biblical platitudes and you give them what they should have bought in the first place. Oh, you feel good about saving souls, but what you're really doing is supplementing their income so they can swill down another couple of quarts of ripple. Now, that's what's known as positive reinforcement of antisocial behavior. Don't you see what you're doing? You're taking away their initiative, their desire to work, their ability to function as useful citizens. Our competitive society has already destroyed that initiative, that desire to work. Do you think these people are happy, feeling useless and unwanted? Why, that's their greatest pain. That's why they drink. Why they're such willing victims of your company. They've got nothing to lose. So that's not the point. Excuse me. <clears throat> I've got to rip off the bakery again. We're running short of donuts. OK, try Harry's this time. He ought to be in a good mood. Do you need me any more, girls? No, it's OK, sister. Why don't we clear the kitchen, gentlemen? Sister, tell me something. What brought you down here to Skid Row, originally, I mean? I was a school teacher. And I decided there were more meaningful things to do. She's being modest. She was a principal at St. Teresa's Girls School, the richest part of town. I used to visit a friend, a nun. I had to drive through Skid Row to get there. After a while, the world I was living in began to seem unreal. $3,000 for a new library roof, $1,000 for a silver service so we could have more successful teas. Gradually, I began to realize that God wanted me to be with the poorest of the poor, to serve them. I've learned it's better not to argue with them. So you quit just like that and set up shop down here? Actually, I left by mutual agreement. You see, in my final months, I tried to make the student body aware that there were social implications of the gospel, social dimensions which couldn't be ignored. A lot of the parents didn't agree with me. They were more interested in the social graces. My order backed me all the way. Sister, let's talk about the blood strike, huh? The blood strike, Mr. Troutman, boils down to economics. Now, our men feel that their blood is worth $15 a pint. <laughs> that is a 300% increase. Yeah, right. Three to $15 a pint. This is the price going anywhere else in this town. But plasma extraction isn't cheap. It takes trained technicians. It takes expensive equipment. Why do you think a, a small independent outfit like Mr. Turner's was forced to sell out to us? 
Yeah, well, I agree. Plasma extraction isn't cheap. But the profits, I mean, they're enormous. Five dollars for the donor, 36 for you. And, and due to some very strange laws, you can take it from a man's body twice a week. Now, now that gives you an endless supply. Strange laws, young man. There's nothing illegal about anything we do. I'll have you know that we're fully licensed operation. We're licensed by the city and we're licensed by the state. It is not illegal, Mr. Turner, just very, very immoral. And if you don't see the difference, I pity you. Sister, I'm just one man trying to eke out a living. Now, you feel for these people down here. I don't. Many like me don't. Now, every society has its casualties. Now, the way I look at it, ours wind up here on Skid Row. That's the way it is. Society's casualties are society's responsibility. We will be judged by the way we treat our least fortunate members. You guys finished for the day? Just lunch. Jeff told me to come in and get some chow. Nancy's back there. She'll fix you up. Now, look, Mr. Troutman. Wait a minute. Vance. Uh, would you mind showing these gentlemen your arms? My beauty marks? Yeah, your beauty marks. Okay. Now, that's from how many trips to the plasma bank? Ah, oh, seven, eight a month. For how long? A couple of years, I guess. What do they pay you for that? Each time? Yeah, each time. Five dollars. Well, do they give you anything else? <laughs> like what? Any, anything, vitamins? No, sir. Nothing at all, huh? No, sir. Not even a glass of orange juice? Not even a glass of water. Hmm. <laughs> Let me ask you, how do you feel about the strike? Uh, it's the greatest thing that ever happened. Why? Well, for one thing, it brought us together, you know what I mean? You know, guys around here used to keep themselves, you know, until they got plowed, you know? I beg your pardon? Drunk man, stone. Then they start carving themselves up with knives. Oh, you could tell it was Saturday night by the number of corpses, you know? And the pools of blood running into the gutter. Well, you know, that's been all changing now. People are starting to talk like, you know, they were civilized. The picket lines, you know? The blacks, the Chicanos, uh, us guys. You know, even the Indians, and they never talked to nobody. Even some of them, sister, are out there carrying signs. I don't know. You know, it's like the first time there's something to get you up, you know, and on your feet in the morning. Something that I don't Something that don't come out of a bottle, you know what I mean? Said that real well, Vance. Get yourself some chow. Hey, pal. When was the last time you tried to get a legitimate job? There ain't no jobs. Not when they look at me. Besides the money, we have two other demands. When the men give blood, we want them to receive vitamins and orange juice. We also want Tepler and other companies to donate to a health fund. A what? A fund. What kind of a fund? A fund to provide medical and dental care. <laughs> medical and dental care? That's funny. The next thing you'll do is be asking us to build your hospital. No, no, a clinic will do. Nothing fancy. I don't think either of you has any idea what these plans would cost to implement. Cost? Cost? You're making a fortune on human misery. Can't you see that? It's gonna change, Mr. Troutman. It's wrong. Next, we plan to tackle the bonus programs. Bonus programs? Oh, I see you haven't heard about Mr. Turner's extra special programs for revenue. There are two. The tetanus program gives anyone who'll allow himself to be injected with live tetanus bacillus a bonus of five dollars every fourth time he donates blood. That's right, five dollars. Five dollars for that risk. What risk? What are you talking about? We've never had a fatality. We've never proved a fatality. The hyperimmunization program is even riskier. It changes the RH factor, makes the blood extremely rare, valuable. Yeah, yeah, but if one of those guys ever gets in an accident and ever needs a transfusion himself, well, forget it. He's a dead duck. There, there, there's no way he'll find any compatible blood. You are using these people as experimental animals. Oh, nonsense. Doctors require a service, and we're the people to provide that service. Undertakers provide a service, too, Mr. Turner. Sister, 
Look, I did not know anything about these bonus programs, but please don't let your concern for your charges blind you to the fact that we are a legitimate and a necessary business. Thousands of people in hospitals all over this country are desperately in need of the plasma you are denying them. There are plenty of healthy people who can give plasma. You do not save a life by taking one. If you close us down, you shut off one of the few sources of income down here. Down here? Hey, man, hey, hey, down here? You talk like Skid Row down here like it's what? Like it's hell? Mr. Cameron, I did not create hell, and I did not create the misery that exists on Skid Row. Oh, yeah, well, you're sure as hell helping it. That is a matter of opinion. That is a fact, and you damn well know it. If you ever walked inside of one of your own plasma banks. Have you, Mr. Troutman? <sighs> Have I what? Ever been inside one of your plasma banks? No, no, not inside. Would you be willing to go if I took you? This way, then. Frank. Look, sister, I'm sorry. I did not want to cross no picket line. But you got to understand, I, I'm dead broke. No problem, Frank. I crossed the line myself. How many times you donated this month, Frank? Oh, I can't remember. Six, seven? Maybe. How long you been on the table? Since 10 o'clock this morning. That's three hours. Man, I got bad veins. Maybe you'd better explain the procedure, Frank. Two of our guests aren't familiar with it. You mean about plasma? How do they take it out of your body? <laughs> First off, if you're like me, they got a hard time getting the needle in. That's because his veins are collapsed. He's been poked over 600 times. One of your star donors, Mr. Trump. Then they take out a pint of blood. One of those guys in the white coats puts it in the spinner. The centrifuge. That get the plasma from the blood. Separates it from the red cells. Well, they keep the plasma someplace in some refrigerator, then put the blood back in. They make up the volume in a saline solution and then re-inject the red cells. And that takes three hours? Oh, no, Mr. Shields. That's just half the show. Tell them what happens next, Frank. Oh, you know, Steve. Then they do it to you all over again. Twice? Human cows, Mr. Trump. While you lie there wishing you were dead, they siphon off another pint of blood. They centrifuge the plasma, and they pour it back into your body. That does take three hours, Mr. Shields. You happen to have veins like Frank's. And for all that torture and all that degradation, Tepler Laboratories pays a grand total of five dollars. You staying awake, Frank? Oh, yes, yeah, sister. Tell them why. So you can watch the numbers on the bag. Make sure you get your own blood back. You see, they don't have registered lab technicians here. A mix-up could put incompatible blood in you. They lost a man at the Market Street Center that way last week. How do we get out of here? Through that door, gentlemen. Now, you take it easy, Frank. Thank you, sister. Sister, I must say what you've shown us in there was very dramatic. Oh, yes, sister, it certainly was. But I still don't think it's fair to, to blame our system for the condition of those people. The circle has to be broken. How long do you think you can keep them sober enough to stay on strike? I don't know. But for the first time, they have a goal. They've taken the first step. These people take all kinds of first steps. They always fall again. You're tripping them, Mr. Shields. Take a good look at what's happening here and remember that all of us Nuns, businessmen, winos, prostitutes. We are all members of the same family with the same divine father. As long as a single person suffers in misery and need, we all suffer. We are all diminished. As long as one human being hurts, you hurt and I hurt. We should never let ourselves forget that. I have to get back to the kitchen. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Uh, how do you
do you like that? Penny saved. Shall we get back to work? Well, tell you one thing. I wish I got as much satisfaction out of my work as she gets out of hers. <sighs> Mail this and uh, put a note in, no strings. Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who seek to share the good news of God's love with all their brothers and sisters in the human family.